Hey everyone, a lot of you have been asking me lately how you record a microphone into your computer. Uh, it's a really common question, but it doesn't seem to be explained thoroughly that many places on the internet. So I wanted to show you guys a few different methods you can use to get sound into your computer. The methods vary a lot depending on how complex the signal chain is going into your computer and also the sound quality you can get from that particular signal chain. I'm just going to use this video to go over the hardware side of things because on the software side it varies so much depending on what kind of computer you have, how fast it is, what kind of recording software you use, etc. So I don't want to get too much into that because it's a little too personalized to give kind of broad guidelines to. So to me it boils down to two questions. The first one is how do you want to connect into your computer? And the second question is what exactly do you want to plug your microphones into? One method for getting sound into your computer is using your computer's line-in jack. If you don't know what this is, it's the 8th inch size jack that's usually on the back of your computer between a speaker output and a headphone output. Nowadays a lot of computers have them on the front as well. In this situation, the line-in jack is acting as both a preamp for the microphone signal as well as a, an analog to digital converter. So it's taking the analog microphone signal and converting it to digital audio. This method tends to have a little bit of noise from your computer's sound card since it's not necessarily made for recording high quality audio, so you can upgrade your sound card and it'll, it'll improve this. Um, but it is a very simple method for going into your computer, uh, and it works fine for recording demos and quick things that you don't need to sound exactly perfect. The other main way to connect to your computer is via USB or Firewire. These are what most audio interfaces use to connect to the computer, so they tend to allow for more professional or pristine audio quality compared to just using your computer's line-in jack. Um, the way it works is basically by connecting this way, you're allowing your computer to bypass its own sound card and use the device it's connected to as its own sound card, which is, since it's built for audio recording, it's probably going to be better quality. Now, what exactly the cords are going to depends completely on the second question, which is... The first method I'm going to show you to get sound into your computer is to plug the microphone directly into the line in jack, like I mentioned earlier. Now, what you need to do this is two adapters and a microphone cord. This is the first adapter you need, which is a mic cord to quarter inch adapter. Now, this just plugs on the end of your microphone cord, like so. Now, this is a quarter inch end, which is the same as a guitar cord, so this would let you plug a microphone into, say, a guitar amp. But in order to get it into the line in jack, which is an eighth inch uh, size jack, you need a quarter inch to eighth inch size adapter. Um, these are really common. You can get both of these at stores like Radio Shack or anywhere online. Uh, just plug the quarter inch end into there, and there you go. So it's basically a mic cord going to eighth inch. So just plug it into your line in jack. Now, like I said, this uses your sound card as a preamp and converter, so it's not the best sound quality, but it will allow you to record one channel at a time of audio into your recording program. So what you do is open your recording software and set the input of one channel to your line in and there you go that's all there is to it one downside of this method is if you want to use a condenser mic uh, this won't supply phantom power so you'll need to get a separate box just specifically for phantom power so it would go microphone to the phantom power box to power it then out of that box to this mic cord to the adapters to the line in Now you can take the previous method and expand on it by recording through a mixer. So instead of a microphone attached to a mic cord to those two adapters, you would take the outputs of the mixer with a regular quarter inch cord, like a guitar cord, going to that last adapter, so it's eighth inch on the end, plugged into your line in. Now if your mixer has stereo outputs, a left and right side, which most mixers do, you would need two cords going to an adapter that has two quarter inch inputs to one stereo eighth inch output. 
and plug that into your line input. That should let you record in stereo, so in your recording software, just set it to record a stereo signal. Now the advantages of recording through a mixer is that it allows you to use the EQ and also if you're using multiple microphones you can pre-mix the levels of them, which is a, what a lot of people are doing for drum covers on YouTube. The next option for what to plug your microphones into is an actual recording interface. This is definitely a little more professional. This is what most home studios use and this is what I personally use for recording my own music. There are a lot of different kinds of audio interfaces, but generally they are single channel, two channel, or eight channel. Now what the, these will allow you to do is to record audio into your computer and have each channel on the interface being recorded onto a separate track in your audio software so you can edit it later. So say you could have a snare microphone, a kick drum microphone, uh, overheads, and have them each editable afterward and add compression to each on their own. So that's a really big step up in recording quality just because of the options it gives you. Um, so these generally connect using USB or Firewire, which, like I said, allows for a better quality audio signal. Uh, so the interface is basically a preamp and a converter in one box. The last option I wanted to talk to you about is optimizing each point along your signal chain by using external preamps into standalone converters, still usually connected via USB or Firewire to the computer. This is generally kind of left to people with really extensive uh, home studios or people running high-end digital studios. Now, the benefit of this is basically you are making each point along your recording chain as good as it can possibly be. Uh, if you use things like uh, preamps like Neves or API, Great River, there's so many really incredible preamps out there, but they get really expensive. It's so easy to spend over a thousand dollars on a single single channel. Um, same thing goes with any kind of out of the box gear, uh, compression, whatever. Uh, the same goes for converters too. Uh, converters like Apogee converters other brands like that get really expensive and generally the more you spend on them the higher quality they're going to be. There are some lower level uh, standalone converters out there like the Echo Audio Fire series and they're, they're good but they're generally kind of considered roughly along the same lines or not a huge step up from the converters that would be in something like a PreSonus Fire Studio, something that has built-in converters and generally the consensus seems to be it's better to have an interface that you can bypass the preamps if you want to and use it as a standalone converter rather than just having not a huge step up of standalone converters and needing to rely on the external preamps. So I tend to recommend getting an audio interface with as many channels as you're going to need. I use a PreSonus Fire Studio project which has eight channels and it works perfectly for me for recording uh, drums and guitars, any kind of stereo signals and it, it works great for me and I find it to be a good solution for most people who are asking about getting into the next level of recording.